Hello everyone, my name is Arjan and for this video I took the concept of a dash tower to a whole new level. Check it out. For the people who don't know what this is, it is an alien spaceship used in certain Dungeons and Dragons campaigns called a nautiloid. Basically, it is a semi-organic vessel that is used to travel through space. I was very much inspired to make this when I saw the trailer for the video game Baldur's Gate 3. I haven't played the game unfortunately because my computer would burst into flames the second I would try to run it. As a first step, I made this illustration to help me plan out this build. I had the idea to open and close the top shield for the dice tower and I used this drawing to get a feel for what shapes and colors I wanted to go for. I decided to start working on the shell first because it can make or break the functionality of this dice tower. I traced the shape onto a piece of cardboard and used some plasticine to build up a crude shape of half of the shell. I did the same, but mirrored for the other half. I then used paper mache to cover the plasticine. I used three layers of newspaper to get to a layer that I felt was strong enough, and I left it to dry overnight and started to work on the dice path inside of the shell. I figured using PVC tubing would be a great idea to create a dice path. It is strong, lightweight, smooth, easy to cut. I was sure this was going to work perfectly, but when I finally tried to fit the tube and, this, and the shell, I realized it was way too thick. I tried to make it thinner with my rotary tool, but in the end I spent a lot of time and it didn't get me anywhere. I really didn't want to redo the shell because it was a lot of work and it was looking quite promising so I chucked the tube and decided to find another solution. After some testing I saw that there was enough space for the dice to roll through the spiral of the shell. This was amazing, not only was I able to use the shell but it also meant that the dice would follow the spiral instead of just dropping into it. To be sure the dice wouldn't get stuck inside of the shell, I made some cardboard ramps that I super glued into place. And after gluing the two pieces together, I started sculpting with polymer clay. First I put a layer of polymer clay inside the dice pot for as far as I could reach inside. And I used the ballpoint tool to create a texture similar to the roof of your mouth. And after that I put a layer of clay over the entire outside surface and used a smaller ballpoint tool to give it some texture. After baking the shell in the oven I stuck a cardboard tube into the shell. This gave me a nice surface to sculpt the body onto and it created a strong connection with the shell. I tested it several times to be sure that the dice didn't get stuck inside. I cut the tube to the desired length and used some more polymer clay to bulk up the body of the ship. For the deck of the ship I used some cardboard and I attached it with milliput. I also used milliput to attach these balls onto the side for the glowing sacks and the eyes. Uh, the balls they are made with an air drying clay and they aren't very smooth. In hindsight I wish I had used something else that was a little bit smoother, especially for the eyes. Uh, fortunately it looks great in the end, but next time I will use something, uh, something else to create spheres like this. To create the stretched skin between the glowing sacks I used uh, green stuff and having the spheres already in place really helped for this. I think it would have been a lot more difficult to sculpt everything in one go. To be able to work further on the skin without constantly touching uncured clay, I decided to attach a brass rod at this point in the build. 
um, it was kind of scary to drill into the shell um, but by not applying too much pressure I was able to do it and I used epoxy glue to fix the rod in place. I clamped the rod into a vise and continued working on the skin. I put on a layer of green stuff and I used a silicone shaper to create the folds. These silicone shapers are great to sculpt softer shapes like this. They really allow you to almost paint into the clay directly. I then decided to work on the shields. I sculpted them using plasticine and because it doesn't cure or dry, this gave me a lot of time to get the shape exactly right. I then used paper mache again, but this time I used it to create some sort of a mold uh, of the plasticine shape. I then filled these molds with uh, clay. Uh, for the first one I used green stuff, but for the other two I used polymer clay. When I removed the paper mache afterwards, I saw that I created a sort of cracked texture. Uh, at first I was a bit frustrated that I would have to fill this and sand it and whatnot, but I quickly realized it was a great extra detail that would have been incredibly difficult for me to sculpt by hand. <laughs> We don't, we don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. At this time I also had the idea to add a dice holder underneath the front shield. I used a rotary tool to cut away material and I then blended the hole with the rest of the skin using some clay. For the top shield I needed to create a hinge. I glued the brass rod between the two insides of the shield with a piece of uh, brass tubing already in place and I then used some clay to hold the brass tube in place and to blend it into the rest of the sculpt. And of course I had to test the mechanism. I hadn't planned that the shield would stay open like it does, but it's not a bug, it's a feature. With the shield finished, I started working on the remaining details of the nautiloid. First up was the deck of the ship. Initially, I wanted to make it look like it was made out of metal, um, like you can see in the illustration, but I decided to lean into the whole organic spaceship theme a little bit more. So I created a similar texture like the rest of the skin, but with uh, smaller folds. Any spaceship needs guns. I used cardboard straws to create mine and uh, to add some extra detail on them I used a new tool I just bought. Uh, it's, a, it's called a Tentacle Maker by Green Stuff Industries. It uses two plastic parts with a grooved surface that you can use to roll clay into tentacles or in this case more like tubing. I used some metal wire inside the tubing for some extra strength. I glued the tubing in place and covered the rest of the gun with a layer of green stuff. I also attached the guns with some clay and I blended them into the skin texture of the rest of the ship. The tentacles of the Nautiloid itself are too big to make with the tentacle maker, unfortunately, so I had to sculpt them by hand. This was very time consuming, but definitely worth the extra effort. Now that all the sculpting was done, I started working on the pedestal. I usually do this before painting so that I don't risk damaging the paint or getting dust all over it. Um, the wood I'm using is called Paduk. It's a beautiful red colored wood that I felt would work great with the colors I had in mind. Basically, I drew out the desired shape on the piece of wood and worked my way towards it in several steps. 
using different tools. Uh, this type of sculpting is called subtractive sculpting instead of the additive sculpting I've been using for the clay parts. I find it really rewarding to create a nice wooden pedestal for my sculpts. And maybe I will make a video in the future going into more detail. If you would be interested in something like this, uh, definitely let me know in the comments. And the final stage is painting. After a black primer, I continued by applying a base coat to all the bigger parts of the sculpture. I used regular acrylic paints instead of the miniature brand paints because of the size of the sculpture. Acrylic paint from an art supply store usually is a lot cheaper than miniature paint. While applying the base coat, I would add some random other colors into it while it was still wet. Um, this adds a lot more visual appealing details and a lot more depth into the big surfaces that would otherwise be really flat. After the base coat, I added some washes and especially here on the shell, the effect was great. Um, it really made the texture stand out even more than it already did. For the shields, I was really struggling to get it to the point where I was satisfied. Um, blending acrylic colors on a large, mostly flat surface like this is really difficult. And it really pointed out that I still have a lot to learn. Um, thinking about it now, I could have used oil paints for this, but at least I got some practice out of it. I have used oil paints on miniatures before, and if you're interested, check out this video of one of my older projects. The cracks in the shields were accentuated with some washes and highlights and I also added some scratches with a very light green and on some parts a little bit of black uh, for some extra detail. The glowing sacks on the side of the ship were quite tricky to get right. I went back and forth with white and yellowish orange glazes until I got a nice blended result. I wanted it to look like stretched out skin with something glowing underneath it. And I'm not sure if this is exactly how it ended up looking, but I'm happy with it nonetheless. The very final parts I painted were the eyes. I knew these would be a very prominent part of the sculpture, so I had to make sure they really stood out. I painted them white and I used several green glazes in a striped pattern emerging from the center of the eye. I used bluish greens on the outside of the eye 
and I slowly worked in more and more yellow and white towards the center. As a finishing touch, I painted the pupils black and added some highlights with white. And that's the end for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to uh, keep up to date with the projects that I'm working on, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, check out the link in the description below. I hope to see you next time and thank you for watching. Goodbye.